Hello, everybody. We today, um, I hope you are all safe and fine. Uh, we start with another topic of urology. It's called Onco Urological Emergencies. Although urologic, urological and non urological cancer are encountered in everyday urological practice. There are certain emergency situations where timely diagnosis and management can significantly affect outcome. And it is defined as an acute condition that's caused by malignancy or its treatment requiring rapid intervention to avoid death or severe damage. Neurological emergencies you know, oncological emergencies actually are those that arise from the genitourinary tract, including an obstruction to the urinary tract, bleeding, non infectious cystitis, acute renal failure or acute renal injury, malignant periapism, it means sustained erections, and spinal cord compression, which is a more serious one, spinal cord compression by malignant. We first start with urinary tract obstruction, which is a common urological problem. <clears throat> we have urological and neurological causes. Its presentation depends largely on location or the site of obstruction, and acuity, or whether suddenly or gradually, will develop. Lower versus upper urinary tract obstruction. Imaging can aid in diagnosis etiology and location of the obstruction. So it's imaging is very important, as we mentioned in the previous lecture. Treatment is uh, geared towards, or we concentrate on elevating the obstruction by ureteral stain, the simplest and the best way to relieve the obstruction. And in A, in upper unit tract obstruction, and urethral catheter for lower unit tract obstruction. These both are called urinary diversion, you know, or by placing an ephrastomy tube or suprapubic catheter. You know, in the first one, it's show the kidney, and we have these illustrations. A percutaneous nephrostomy diverting urine from the kidney to the outside. It is just like a colostomy, which divert feces when there is distal obstruction. So it means it is not actual stoma, but it is a diversion of urine by means of a, a nephrost, by means of a tube. It is not like a colostomy you open to the skin. We have as well. In, in, in not emergency, for example, cutaneous retrostomy is also a stoma formation, or suprapubic cystostomy is also in an open in, in, in chronic conditions. We are going to do it like this. So our future direction is management of section neuropathy should focus on. Maximizing the drainage, it is just an illustration. You maximize the drainage of the urine to the outside to relieve the obstruction, to elevate the condition. We have non infectious states in lower urinary tract, is a number of symptoms consistent with just like any lower lutes, urgency, frequency, and dysuria. And these non infectious states are induced really by radiation. Those who have got pelvic organs radiation like CA prostate, CA bladder, and CA rectum, all these may affect the bladder and cause cystitis. Or the chemotherapy induced cystitis, that the drugs that has been used for urological and non-urological malignancies may affect by their metabolite on the bladder, which is usually excreted by the urine, and cause an inflammation of the bladder wall that's called cystitis radiation system. 
Uh, radiation induces tides. It's as I mentioned, it is an external beam radiation in cases of neoplasm of the bladder itself or the prostate or the cervix in the female or the rectum or anal canal in the male. This damage occurs in three stages, acute, chronic, and late, ranging from four to six weeks, six months per year, up to 10 years after radiation treatment perspective. It presents as cystitis. It may present from one week to several. The most important thing here is the first thing is immaturity and other symptoms of cystitis. The diagnosis is based on clinical suspicion or when, almost always when you confront it or examine the patient or the patient is complaining from, from a hematuria and lewd slurry nectar symptoms and see what's the diagnosis, whether the neurological emergency or the neurological emergency. Should always rule out infection, always rule out infection. Treatment. We have in these cases, we have hematuria. The patient has got, come to the patient usually acutely and suffer from severe pain, suprapic pain, unable to urinate, with some blood coming out from the urethra. So in these cases, the emergent thing is to put three ways, catheter and irrigate to wash out the bladder. To wash out the bladder and to take out clothes out. Intravesical medical therapy, then you induce, you put through this catheter some drugs that may stop the bleeding. For example, sodium pentosan, polysulfate, it's not, it's not uh, necessary to know all this, but to have an idea that there are drugs that when you mm, induce inside or intravesically introduce or give intravesically to stop this bleeding are a lot. And on the top, previously, we have only formal, very low concentration, which is painful, and you have to give to, to the patient a lot of, sorry, uh, painkillers, hyperbaric oxygen. When all this fails, you have to do surgery. And the surgery in the form of embolization of the internal iliac arteries, or sometimes you oblige to do salvage cystectomy. It means you remove the blood. Chemotherapy induced is alkylating agent. The, on the top is cyclophosphine. You just know cyclophosphine. The others just for interest. Anybody wants to uh, read about the other drugs? Ifosomide, trophosomide, and cephosomide, and causing hemorrhagic cystites, called hemorrhagic cystites. Symptoms, as I mentioned previously, the same as as before, and this is a repeat of the previous treatment. How to prevent? How to prevent when giving a cyclophosphamide to a patient? You should induce hydration. It means the urine out should be at least two and a half liter per day. Why to wash out the this drug is not to be collected in the blood. And in case the patient to urinate, and in, in the same way, you have to detoxify these drugs by means of mercapto uh, ethane sulfonate. If, if bleeding or interstitial cystitis develop after you, this mode of prevention, still the patient develop cystitis, you treat accordingly. Acute renal shutdown or acute renal injury is another uh, cause of, as a result or sequelae of treating uh, malignancies. It's a sudden decrease in glomerular filtration rate. It's a serious complications of many malignancies which cause important morbidity and mortality. In critically ill patient with cancer, Acute renal shutdown or renal failure usually occurs in context of multiple organ dysfunctions. The patient is also susceptible to this type of um, renal failure. 
Rotary to rate is high. The mechanism is caused by reduction in blood renal perfusion and a response of the kidney to a decreased effective circulating volume. Cancer patients appear particularly susceptible to this mechanism due to their high comorbidity and the multiple medical interventions they are exposed. A lot of toxic drugs which are at the same time essential for the treating of malignancy, but they are both this sequel. It can appear in association with dehydration. You should always overhydrate the patients to prevent mucositis bleeding or fair spacing. Inflammatory. non citrulitic inflammatory drugs can be careful. Don't give non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs to those who have got malignancies. Please, because it will precipitate the acute renal injuries. And hydration, always please override. Sepsis is another cause that it precipitate this acute renal shutdown. It's called pre renal it means, it means the circulation. Renal intrinsic factors, acute hemoglobin cross, provoked by other causes are nephrotoxic compound, intramycal hemolysis. Acute renal or acute tubular necrosis, when there is renal vascular vasoconstriction and decrease of coronary blood flow along with tubular cell injury, an obstruction that may cause middle risk. Post-renal is a result of obstruction located within the kidneys, crystal, heavy crystalline, when sometimes you have heavy crystal urea, or in cases of severe diabetes, sometimes you have got papillary necrosis, and this papillary necrosis may cause pain, or even sometimes, really, can obstruct the ureters. It is, or, when you are giving treatment to the patients, the metabolites, it's called just, it's caused all these metabolites in the blood as a result of the destruction of malignant cell, it should be excreted by urine. And this causes tumor lysis syndrome. Sinus symptoms vary with the size and rapidity. Symptoms of, it will present as symptoms of renal injury or renal failure. The diagnosis is based on the laboratory result with decrease in glomerular filtration rate and increase or rise in blood urea and serum curve. Treatment is accordingly according to Then we come to the bleeding. Another complication of malignancies in urology. It is coming from the tumor itself, for example. A TCC, transversal carcinoma of the pelvic of the kidney, a TCC in the bladder, or a renal cell carcinoma, or rarely an angiomyolipoma, uh, non malignant, although we included this because to be familiar with. Because sometimes it is said that probably a big angiomyoma may have some, uh, some rarely some of this prone to be malignant, which is rare. From previously resected tumor, for example, your senior have done a renal sparing surgery, a partial nephrectomy, and one of the stitches, small, when the arteries has been ligated, or the bleeding is not obvious during the operation, they suture the kidneys, and after that, postoperatively, the vessel will open and cause severe bleeding. After irradiation, and fistula formation between stent and ureter, a major vessel sometimes has happened. When you put a stent, because the tumor necrosis, a vessel will open and your stent will go inside the, the great vessels, for example, ureter or fistula, ureter or the aorta. Treatment, if it is the bladder, as shown here, you just go and direct, you directly cauterize the source of the bleeding in the blood. After the resuscitation of the patient, in every, in every case, whenever you face a bleeding, you should examine the patient carefully, assess vital sign, prepare blood, and then you are going definitely to go to treat the source of the bleeding. Whether it's in the upper 
by angio mobilization, as in, we discussed that in the neuroradiological intervention, uh, angio mobilization, cauterizing, and feeding RT. Sometimes you should go and open and you ligate the feeding RT. Management of the resultant obstructive uropathy via ureteric stent. And sometimes you have a lot of clot in the ureter. It will cause severe pain. It's called hematuria. We put a stent, remove the obstruction, and then you don't follow it. Another one is malignant parapism. This is happened when you have got the CA process and direct invasion to the corpora cavernal. That's caused by the stent erection, painful and caused by cavernous sinus and associated venous system invasion by the malignant. We have such and sometimes we have rarely a penile malignancy and cause uh, sustained periapis. Primary location, usually in the pelvic cavity organ, namely the prostate and the bladder are the most common ones. Diagnosis by MRI. There's a picture of MRI showing the malignant cells invading the corpora and causing the erection, sustained erection. Management is tailored according to the cause. Conservative, just to have an idea. The most important thing is you should excise the corpora cavernous with the effective treatment and relieving the pain. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to have total pinectomy, radiotherapy, or chemotherapy. Uh, we have another important topic, which is caused by malignancy, urological and non-urological, which are metastasizing to the spinal cord, to the vertebrae, spinal vertebrae. It is really an, an oncological emergency. You should always suspect whenever you have got a patient suffering from CA prostate, or CA bladder, whenever they have severe back pain, and it is called radiculitis, radiating constricting pain in the back, from the back to the into the front, followed by paresthesia of the lower limb, you should always suspect, be careful about it. It is an oncological emergency. Early diagnosis intervention may prevent debilitating neurological sequelae, and it may end by paraplegia an incontinence of urine. So spinal cord compression is the second most common neurological complication in cancer patient after brain metastasis and affect approximately about 5% of the cancer patient. Although lung, prostate, and breast cancer are leading causes of spinal cord compression, patients with prostate and breast cancer and multiple myeloma have increased risk of developing spinal cord compression. Okay? Now, always, especially prostate, is very important to think about it. <clears throat> you see, there is a vertebrae, and this is spinal cord, it's an MRI showing a hematogenous vertebral body metastasis is the most common mechanism. Hmm? See? It's mostly in the thoracic vertebrae. You see the vertebra is waist. And there is compression of the spinal cord. Epidural venous plexus obstruction may lead to vasogenic edema, <coughs> sorry, of the white matter, which occurs in early stage. And it is associated with increased inflammatory result in hypoxic injury to the spinal cord. The first of that. Very important. Think about that. And then in the other MRI, you see that uh, the spinal cord is most, mostly more, more severely compressed posteriorly, and even anteriorly, the metastasis is very well defined. Vascular, endo vascular endothelial growth factors release induced by relative hypoxia and venous stasis, which increases vascular permeability and interstitial edema creating a vicious cycle. So there is a lot of edema surrounding the spinal cord. 
So it's an emergency. So you should do an early decompression. By it should be done sorry by neurosurgeon. Uh, the early recovery of this compression maybe, and may cause sometimes irreversible spinal cord damage and debilitating sickle. As early as possible to be interfered is better than to wait. It, uh, mostly in the thoracic, 60%, the thoracic spine, lumbosacral 30%, affected cervical spine 10%. Pain, which is observed in 83 to 95% of the patient. It may be, as I said, the radical pattern, or it may refer to the lower, lower down, even lumbosacral to lower limbs. It is aggravated the pain by movement, straining, and cuffing. It, it means any increase in the abdominal pressure may cause the aggravation. Muscle weakness is a common sign of motor deficit, and it's observed in 60 to 86 percent of the patient. By the time the patient comes to you, two-thirds of them are not ambulatory. Sensory loss, common, unco less common, but may be observed in more than 40% patients. Numbness and paresis are also occur in patients with spinal cord compression. Bladder and bowel dysfunction and ataxia can occur later, although I have seen bladder, some of these patients coming to the first presentation is bladder dysfunction. Irritation of the blood, or sometimes coming from an ability to read. Differential diagnosis, although always you keep in your mind that probably this is a metastasis, so other cause may be a spasm, a muscle spasm, it may be a spinal stenosis or integral disc disease, intervertebral disc disease, or spinal epidural abscess. Radiation myelopathy and metastatic disease with vertebral metastasis without spinal cord comb should be considered in differential diagnosis of an entity called myelopathy due to radiation. There is metastasis. They have pain in the spinal cord, for example, C prostate. They should have some low dose of radiotherapy for decreasing the pain, but unfortunately, it may cause myelopathy. Additionally, brain metastasis may lead to similar presentation and should be rolled out. Management, try to maintain and improve neurological functions. And glucocorticoid, you know, to decrease the edema. Radiotherapy in, in, in less special type of external radiation. It's called stereotactic body radiation therapy. And surgery are widely used for the compression. Likewise, patients with chemo and radiosensitive tumors, such as small cell carcinoma, lymphoma, or germ cell tumors of the testes may have a variable treatment outcome. So in these cases, you can do surgical sessions. Algorithm for management of small concoction, suspicious symptoms, high suspicious, do MRI, multidisciplinary evaluation by you, by the surgeon, by the oncologist, with the aid of others, give first intravenous glucocorticoid. If these are radiosensitive tumors, you do a radiotherapist, do stereotactic radio radiotherapy. <coughs> and if there's a single area of spinal cord compression, you probably may go to the surgery by decompression. And Thank you very much.